Thank you, gentlemen. Folks, it is great to be back at Hobnob with you. It's a great time to see folks all across the state, those of us that have worked together on campaigns, on issues that are important to the future of Mississippi, and that's what makes Hobnob such a great event, a great time in the fall to get together. As your state auditor, I want to share with you a little bit of first. Let me give you a point of personal privilege. As the state chairman for the Romney campaign, it has been amazing to watch our state be on the national stage, not just here in the primary, but just to let you know, as of yesterday, over 200 of our fellow Mississippians have signed up to leave Mississippi to go campaign here in the last 72 hours this weekend. We have Mississippians in Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, all the swing states making a difference for the future of our great nation. As your state auditor, it's a privilege to protect our reputation and protect our state's integrity. In my first term in office, and now after almost a first year of the second term, over 90 individuals have pled guilty or been found guilty by a jury of their peers. We've got over another 60 individuals who are, have been indicted, arrested, arraigned, or waiting to stand trial, and we have recovered over $8 million of our tax dollars that were embezzled and stolen and have returned it to the governments that it was taken from. That's what we get to do day in and day out on behalf of us, on behalf of you, the taxpayers of the state of Mississippi. Now this year will be the most aggressive legislative agenda that I have embarked upon since I have been sworn in as state auditor. Our staff is working very diligently and after our first term in office there are some key issues that need to be brought, brought to forefront and that we need to be honest about as a business community, as a governmental community, as Mississippians. Not a one of us here at Hobnob will disagree that one of the greatest keys and foundations to economic development, to job creation, to the future of our state is education. Education is the bedrock for that next generation success. But folks, every year we have a bloodletting in the legislature over what's called the MAEP formula, and today I want to tell you the MAEP formula is broken. For the second time since I have been sworn in as state auditor, I have issued a letter to the legislature, to the governor, and to the education community saying that I could not validate the MAAP formula. This year, I issued that letter earlier this month and laid out the facts that we cannot validate the numbers that go into that formula. 62% of our state budget cannot be validated. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. No two school districts have the same definition for average daily attendance. If your kid goes to Jones County School District, they may only have to go to school for two hours and they're counted as being there all day. There may be another school district in North Mississippi, they only have to be there for an hour and they're counted as being there all day. Meanwhile, there may be other, state, other school districts that require the children to be there for two thirds of the day. When our school districts can't be on the same page and aren't doing the same thing, the formula is not accurate. Another example is when it comes to our transportation part of the formula. Every school district under state law is required to have a transportation plan of how the buses run and pick up the kids. At no point is the mileage validated making sure we the taxpayers are getting the best bet for our buck and those mileage are decreased and efficient and effective and safe for those children. But one of the biggest issues that can't be validated because no one validates the free and reduced lunch program that goes into that formula. The formula is based on the number of children that get free and reduced lunches, but yet today in Mississippi, all that you have to do is fill out the form because nobody goes back and checks, do you actually deserve a free and reduced lunch? One of the most disturbing issues on this front for me as a Jones Countyan, my wife and my family, we live in Laurel. 66% of the students in the Jones County Public Schools are on free and reduced lunch. Well, fr friends, I'm a citizen of Jones County, and there are not that many poor children in Jones County. We have got a fundamental problem with the MAP formula. It is broken, it cannot be validated, and the legislature has to fix it so that we have integrity in how we fund education in Mississippi. 62% of our state budget cannot be based on a formula that has no performance drivers in it. 
And that brings me to the second part of our legislative agenda. Working with the governor and his staff, the auditor's staff, we're looking into performance-based budgeting. And we are, while we have the laws in Mississippi that require performance-based budgeting, it is a farce and it does not work. And even members of the legislature have admitted they do not use performance measures when it comes to the final budget. When the legislature needs to address true performance-based budgeting to make sure that we, the taxpayers, are getting a tangible result for our hard-earned tax dollars. These are key issues that will affect the future of our state, education, budgeting, but also when it comes to public corruption. Jeff Pender wrote an excellent article two weeks ago in the Clarion Ledger on the Sunday edition. Folks, when public employees betray the public trust, they should never be allowed to sit at home and watch days of our lives and eat ice cream as a result or as a punishment. We're going to call on the legislature this year to make sure that public employees, when they betray the public trust, do not have the opportunity to have their sentence adjudicated or non-adjudicated. They don't have the opportunity to have a pretrial diversion. When they plead guilty or they're found guilty, they should have a felony on their record and never be allowed to work for us, the taxpayers, again. They should never be allowed to have a second bite at the apple. And with our prison system being overcrowded and the cost of incarceration going up, these individuals, if they're put on house arrest, it should be mandatory under state law that they perform community service and not sit at home watching television. These individuals should be held accountable. And law enforcement agencies such as the auditor's office, the DAs, the sheriff's departments, the FBI and others who work diligently to protect our reputation and integrity have every right to expect, just like we the taxpayers, that these individuals will be held accountable. These are the issues we're going to be pushing that I think are critical to protecting integrity, the reputation, and who we are as Mississippians in the coming year to make sure our state continues to move forward for that next generation. Thank you all so much for being out here today. Thank you for your support and allowing me to serve as your state auditor.